two, three, go. Good morning and welcome to the Border Watch Racing Department. Rod Morris, sports editor, and David Gilbert, our racing writer. Gilbo, 24 hours to cup time, are you excited? Absolutely, yes. Busy time of the year, isn't it? Nine big races and uh, heaps of visitors in town. Yeah, yeah two days of the Carnivals, uh, Friday and uh, Sunday. We've had uh, some good lead-up races, particularly the Millicent Cup of Fortnite ago at Panola. What did you gain out of that for the cup? Oh, I think uh, the Mount Gambi Cup might have, might have gone around that race, actually. Yeah. Uh, the three place sitters here are all t are lobbing around again uh, tomorrow, so I reckon, uh, yeah, that could uh, be in the money again. More on that later. Let's try and come yep. up with some winners. Nine races tomorrow, the first being the uh, the mid-field uh, meets auto cell hurdle at uh, 11.25, over 3,050 3, metres. I like it's the truth, it's good. It's the, the one that's uh, jumping off the page at me, although uh, there's nothing that's really special. No, well, for starters, <coughs> The winner's going to come from away because there's no uh, local horses in the, the jumping cape at the moment. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, a field of 12. Uh, nothing stands out very much, but uh, I've gone with uh, Goldtown, who's uh, trained by Eric Musgrove, leading trainer in the uh, jumping cape in Victoria, and uh, he's from the, he's a proven uh, jumper. He's uh, got Aaron Lynch on board, and a good jump jockey, and. Uh, I reckon he can just about get away with the first. Okay, Carl, that's your selection. I'm sticking with the truth. What uh, caught my eye with that? It won a trial at Oakbank uh, over the jumps not long ago. So that's coming out of the John O'Connor stable at uh, at uh, Murray Bridge. So for me, it's it's the truth. Mossdale and Jalio, numbers 235. Race two is the uh, Win TV Sabaos Maiden Plate at uh, 12 o'clock, right on midday. So it'd be a nice way to enjoy our lunch. So we can come up with the winner, Gilbo. Absolutely. And in the, in the second, there's uh, six first starters, which doesn't make it very easy, of course. Uh, unless, you, unless you know a little bit about uh, whether they've trialled or uh, done something sensational on the track. Local uh, trainer Michael O'Leary has got three runners, including Paris Scene, which uh, ran a very good second on to Burt and Aracourt recently. Uh, my last has got to be a danger. It's uh, from the Daryl Dodson stable. Had two runs, and uh, they were both in Adelaide, and, and one of those was a third. So they're the two that uh, stand out for me. Oh, I was leaning towards... Uh Harrison out of the O'Leary stable as well, but another one that caught my eye was Legal Linda from uh, Kay Edwards over at Caston. She hasn't had too many winners, but uh, a fourth of eight at Eden Hope in not a bad field. So for me, Legal Linda, Parasoon, and possibly Mr. Mr. Doeboy, 7, 11 and 10. Race three on the card, Gilbo, is the Planary Group Steeplechase. This is one event that I am really looking forward to. I love the jump racing. This is a 12.35 over 3,400 metres, and it is one of the feature races. Absolutely. I mean, the people on the fence on Cup Day to watch two races, that's the Mount Gambia Cup and the Steeplechase. The rest of the time they can uh, be seen uh, socialising and fraternising and whatever, and, but the Steeplechase is a real draw card. Yeah. Alright, who, who are you leaning towards here? Well, I only had one Steeplechase here at the Mount, but I reckon last year's winner, the Grey Galloper Dinner of the can uh, make it back-to-back Steeplechases. Uh, led him a merry dance in the Grand Daniel of Waterville last start, and this race is uh, not near as hard or as far as that, so... I reckon the grey horse can win it again. I thought it had two great races at Warnwell over the space of uh, three days. It raced in the Brearley, finished seventh, and then in the in the Grand uh, National Chupel Chase. You said it read them a merry dance. It didn't actually win, but it was right up there, right until the very last jump. Oh, and the, the right-hand turn, I thought it cost it a little bit mm. dearly. Uh, he's got uh, Robert Malloy on board, a uh, different jockey from last year. I think he had uh, John Allen oh, last yeah, year when yeah. he won the uh, Steeple Chase. So, uh, he's out of the McNamara stable. It's a dinner la time from me. We will lead second, C Town, so three, five, and six. Oh. All right, race four, uh, we can get to our right page. Uh, we're back onto the flat races. It's the Border Watch Sabaos two year old maiden plate over 1400 metres. It's uh, 10 past one. I'm leaning towards Backett, OJ, and Penelope Pussycat for no real reason. Backett uh, comes out of Graham Simstale over at Castleton. Well, we tr we'd better find the winner of this race, uh, Rod being the Border Watch maiden. So exactly. Uh, yeah. Well, let's back it, let's back it. <laughs> Well, I didn't sit quite see it that way. It's a big field, 1,400 metres, and uh, I've got come up with a wonderful horse that will be ridden by a top presenting jockey, Dean Yendall, who hasn't been in Mount Gambia for several years, but it's good to see Dean back in the south east. And he's on uh, one of the horses you mentioned in Penelope Pussycat. She uh, ran a very good second first up at Hamilton, and then obviously did not handle a wet track last out at Warrnambool. And I reckon it should be very hard to toss it. It comes out of the uh, the wild, so Bill and Simon Wild, Father and Son, Joe from Warrnambool, and they're not bringing donkeys over, are they? No, well, the Wild Stable is a big chance to win the horse float, uh, which has been put up by the club this year. So 
a trainer's got to win four races uh, over the carnival, and obviously Wilds are bringing a, a heap of horses over, and this is one of them. Change the conditions for the horse boat from last year, Gilbo, uh, this year mm. it's uh, just a winner of four races, and as long as it's one of the feature races, which is the Blue Lake uh, Volcano Handicap, the Blue Lake Handicap, the Volcano Handicap, and the Gulf Cup. But uh, with more on that one later, we'll see yeah. the Gold Cup to come. My uh, selection in that one, uh, as I said, was uh, back. But I like OJ too, out of the Sue Murphy stable. She's... You uh, do. I do, actually. Yeah, I, uh, Sue uh, is a uh, leading trainer at the moment, only just. Yes. Uh, you don't like, you're not a fan of OJ? I've been backing OJ. It's, <coughs> it's been sending me to the wall. So. It's cost you money. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's move on to race five. And uh, this one will be at... Uh, if I can find the right time, just bear with me. 1.45, it's the Carlton Brass Silver Bullet and one of the uh, the really good races of the carnival. It is. Uh, it's a 900 metre race, hence that's the name Silver Bullet. Uh, we heaps of speed on here and uh, I like uh, a horse all the way from Geelong with a Geelong jockey on board by the name of Savannah. Uh, Damien Thornton's a very promising young apprentice and he's got the mount uh, tomorrow and the horse has been off the scene for six weeks. That goes very quick and... Uh, the jumps for the front, but might be the last they see it. Has, has good, good form. I've they've gone to a, a last start winner which won at the Warrnambool Carnival a couple of weeks ago, and it's a locally trained uh, Connardell number one out of the Ricky Bruin stable. It uh, was very impressive, I thought, winning over 1100 metres back on uh, the 1st of May. So for me, Connardell, gold zero, and I'm smoking. I'm just not quite convinced on Savannah yet. Gilbo will wait and see. So one, three, and six in race number five. Race six, I know you're going to laugh at my selection here, Gilbo. This is the uh, Diesel Extra Advantage Handicap at uh, 2.20. It's over 1,550 metres. I'm going to give it one more chance. Hustle a shaman. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, you don't, you don't like it. Where are you, Lee? Uh, well, with Hustle a shaman, that was my bit of the day at uh, Panola last uh, start. And let eight, me, let eighth me of 12. Down. I know it was a bad, mm. bad run, but before that, uh, oh. you give it one more chance. It was second before that, a couple of thirds, and it won back at Panola. Back in uh, way back in June, and that was a long time ago. But I like Hustler. Show me my second tip. I think is your winner, Tuscan Ranger. That's the one. Yeah, Tuscan Ranger uh, is uh, just had the two runs this time for uh, Lee Creek Stable. They were, his last run at Waterloo was very good. I didn't see the run, but Lee assures me it was an excellent run. Uh, Tuscan Ranger did win his maiden hit back in March here at Mount Gander, so he can handle the track, and uh, I reckon he might be a good each way chance in race six. Okay, my trifecta there is Hustle of Shoma, Tuscan Ranger, Midnight Bus, 4, 6 and 14. Box them up and we might get some value. Race 7 on the program tomorrow is the Carlton Draft Volcano Handicap. This one's over 1,200 metres at 2.55 and it's one of the events that links in with the uh, the horse float for the trainers. That's correct. It's the Volcano Handicap, a time-honoured race here in Mount Gambia. It has been for, for decades and uh, it's a good field again uh, tomorrow with uh, plenty of uh, speed on and... And there will be plenty of speed because Mr. Farinelli likes to lead, and also the up and coming horse from the Richard Nicholson stable in Ogundi is very speedy, so uh, they could set a mean pace. And I've, I've actually gone for one to come over the top of them, and that is uh, Ned Walker, trained Ace or Joker from Millicent. Ace or Joker last start ran third at Panola, was coming home very well, and as I say, if the pace is on, he could be the one just to uh, well, Ned, top Ned's, up. Ned's gone for Dominic Turner on that, so he's not mucking around. He's gone for one of the better jockeys. Absolutely. <coughs> Pardon me. I, I'm going to stick with the gun. It line my pockets, but uh, Penal on Millicent Cup Day. Also like Mr. Farinelli, so 4, 2 and 6. Gilbo, you're learning somewhere else with uh, Ace or Joker thrown in. Uh, I like Vinod that, uh, that, that of, uh, down Cosher's stable. He's got Justin Potter on board. To, Oh, he's, he's a bit of a roughie. He's been. Oh, he won't be rough. He'll be one of the fancy ones because he's been very consistent. They haven't been out of the place in his last five starts. So uh, yeah, he'll be right there when the whips are cracking. Well, the next race is uh, race eight at 3:33. It's the Scott Group of Companies Mount Gambier Gold Cup over 2,400 metres. That's the one we're really going to see outside of the steeplechase for me. But, uh, Absolutely. But this, is, this is the one. Yep, that's the one. It's the richest race in the Limestone Coast for the year. Uh, no Adelaide horses this year, which is a bit unfortunate, but Adelaide did put on a race called the Port Adelaide Cup last Saturday, which uh, took a bit of uh, gloss off the Mount Gambier Cup. There's a couple of runners uh, that went around in that race that probably would have gone around in the Mount Gambier Cup tomorrow. Uh, a very good race, and I think the locals can, can win it again. At the weights, I'm very keen on risk at all. It's quoted at $11 in the, in the early markets, which is unbelievable. I don't think you'll get anything, anything like that. He won the cup last year and he's actually got less weight tomorrow than what he carried last year, so I find it would be hard to beat. Very impressive run in the Millicent Cup. Was. Uh, 
in a third behind its stable made even more action and uh, in between them by memory was Texan Morney which was also listed uh, in the Gold Cup tomorrow number two. I like Hissing Sid, its form is just, it's very hard to toss but it's carrying huge weight, six mm. and a half kilos. It is, uh, it won the, the Warrnambool Cup a couple of years ago didn't it? But uh, won back to back Warrnambool yeah. Cup, so 2010, uh, 11 and, and 10, so it's no mug at all, at, uh, it's out of the Bill and Simon Wild stable. But Michael O'Leary, uh, the local trainer, he's had six Gold Cups already. Yeah. Prong for number seven. Well, he's got uh, a twin uh, prong attack in this. He's got risk at all and, of course, even yeah. more action in the middle of the Middleton Cup. And uh, they'll both be there, I can assure you, in the, yeah. in the final fell. I suppose the other one we should mention too, and it would probably complete the fairy tale for the season, would be Club Royale, the Lee Creek stable. He's already won three Coastal Cups. That's correct, yeah. So he's already got Border Town, Narricourt and Panola. Yep. Wouldn't it be great if he could add the board to add the Mount Gampier Cup? Well, it'll create history for a start. Uh, he's uh, had a, more like a shoe than me. He's had a wonderful year. He's got a new jockey tomorrow because uh, I'm going to kick me normally rides it, but she's uh, obliged to ride uh, Texan Morning. So tomorrow we've got the international jockey who's a guest of the club in Noel Callow riding, so he won't do her any harm either. And absolutely not. So for me, you'll go my trifecta for the Cup. It's Hissing Sid, Risk at All, Club Royale, 1, 7 and 3. Yours? Mine is 7, 3 and 8, which is... Uh, Risk it all to beat uh, Club Royale and number eight, which is the oh the Waterbull horse. It's a T tell us more. Yeah, it's uh, coming across here. It uh, hasn't got any f flash form at the moment, but it has won twice over 2,400. Well, let's combine forces. Let's go one, three, seven, and eight. Box draw effect of four of them, and uh, we'll see you in the bar after that race. Actually, I thought you would have thrown in your old favourite there. You couldn't find a place for General McJosh. General McJosh, I, I think we might have seen the best of uh, General McJosh, unfortunately. I'd love to see him uh, win another cup, but yeah. I think the best is well and truly behind him. Okay. Race 9, the Get Out Stakes on the, on the cup, tomorrow, on cup Carnival tomorrow is uh, Race 9 at 4.13. It's the Bow Repairs Rating Handicap, over 1,800 metres. I like Gary Bowyer's horse, nothing like a flash, with Chad Lever on board number two. A very hard race to finish the program. I hope you're in front coming to the last because uh, it's a big field and bookies, bookies will be cheering. I think there'll be probably four or five to one the field. You've mentioned one of the chances, but there's a heap. There's the Fonds, nothing like a flash, Peace and Quiet, Jim of Kingston, Another Gear, Call Me Adam, Al Seti, and a roughy for the day, it might be an, called Calendar of Fools. That wouldn't be an <laughs> omen bet by any That could right? well be. The other omen bet, I think, is the lightweight of the field. It's 56 kilos, and it, it has won on... Uh, the Mount Gambia track uh, four starts ago when it was involved in a float accident, a truck accident on the oh, way to the, the yeah. track. It was uh, 15 schooners out of Warrnambool and probably the only bet for a few carnival goers tomorrow. Well, we might be nudging that total by the last race. Along with the calendar of fools, as you mentioned. Absolutely. Okay, my trifecta of the last, nothing like a flash, half moon rising, peace and quiet, 243. Yep, mine's 7119. Have you got a best bet? O'Gundy, race 7, O'Gundy, number 4. My best is just in the cup, risk it all each way. Well, hopefully we've got some winners for you from the Border Watch Racing Department, Rod Morris and David Gilbert, wishing you good luck tomorrow. Cheers.